Hey everybody, Catherine here. Welcome to the channel. Today is a celebratory video. I am celebrating my two year anniversary of hitting the road full time. When you see this video, it will go live on May 2nd, Sunday, May 2nd. However, my two year anniversary was officially yesterday, <laughs> Saturday, May 1st. On April 30th of 2019, I moved out of my apartment and May 1st of 2019 was my first full day living in my truck camper. It was crazy, you know, giving up my entire life that I had known, a career, a sticks and bricks home, stability for the unknown. I recently posted a video discussing why I chose the nomadic lifestyle, which I will link, I think, here <laughs> and I will also link it below if you'd like to catch up on that but um, in this video I just kind of wanted to go over briefly my first two years on the road and what that was like and uh, I also will answer three of my most frequently asked questions at the end of this video so stay tuned so May 1st, 2019, I set out with feelings of absolute terror and excitement uh, for the unknown. I had no idea what was to come. Well, it's officially official. I am no longer a San Clemente, California resident. I moved into this thing a couple of days ago, actually on May 1st and I've spent two nights in it so far. It, it's crazy to think back on it now. Um, I can't believe I did it, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm very glad I did, but I kind of shocked myself that I was uh, able to pull this thing off. My plan was to come to Escalante, Utah. That was going to be my first major stop. And the reason that I decided to do that is because I wanted to go somewhere familiar. And I had spent some time in Escalante, Utah in 2018. So I felt very comfortable heading there. It actually is where I am right now, ironically. Before I headed for Utah, I spent about a week at a local campground near my home just to make sure that I knew the ins and outs of the workings of this rig because I was completely green before you know setting out on the long journey. Once I did hit the road, I spent one night in Nevada. That was my first real boondocking experience. And then I head for Utah. After a year of thinking and planning and doing everything I needed to do to get on the road, I was finally on the road. I was headed for Escalante. However, on the drive to Escalante, my truck started making some crazy noises, noises that it should not be making. And it was when I was turning my wheel. Upon arrival, I drove straight to a garage and it turned out that my steering pump needed to be replaced. My first couple of days in Escalante were spent dealing with that issue. I feel like that was actually a good test for me and it was an important test at the beginning of this journey because I was forced to deal with adversity right off the bat and to see how I handled it. I was very proud of how I handled it it actually boosted my confidence to continue on with the journey and that I was going to be able to handle whatever came along. Another thing I did to kind of put me at ease and give me some sense of comfort was that I made plans with friends and family in the coming months ahead so that I knew that I wouldn't go too long before I would see a friend or a family member. And that just gave me a level of comfort that I probably wouldn't have had otherwise. I might have just felt like, wow, I'm just out here on my own. And it might have been a little bit more scary had I not done that. 2019 was all about discovery and finding my way in this new lifestyle. It was just very kind of hit and miss and you know I had a lot of emotions going on. However, I don't think that I ever felt like I had made the wrong decision. It was more about just kind of the day to day, you know, where are you going to go next? Where are you going to camp next? Just the kind of menial decisions that were sometimes tough to make. <laughs> I wound up spending a lot of money in that first year. I wound up utilizing campgrounds and RV parks quite a bit more than I would have expected. And again, it was just trying to find that comfort level and knowing that I definitely had a place to go to that evening because I paid for it. So I wound up paying for places quite a bit more. Um, second year, we'll get into that later, but you know, that was much less of an issue. 
hearing from other people that live this lifestyle, it sounds like that's pretty common. <laughs> um, it still wound up being an absolutely fantastic year. I did so much traveling around the West. I went to Utah, Wyoming, Washington, Idaho, the Sierra Nevada, and even Canada. <laughs> wow, I made it to Canada that first year. I didn't spend a lot of time there, but it was absolutely incredible. I, I definitely got around. Experiencing that type of freedom for the first time was absolutely incredible. I knew that once I had that taste of that, that there was no looking back and that this was something that I wanted to continue to do. When I originally set out to do it, I had only planned on trying it for a year and just seeing how things would go. That year went by so quickly that I knew that the, it was not gonna be time to give it up. I knew that I had to continue. It was just too fantastic. I can't sit here and say that it was always peaches and cream. I did have adversity to overcome. I had a mouse invasion in the summer and in all of the homes I've ever lived in in all my life, I've never had to deal with mice getting into my home so that really creeped me out I, I felt like I was terrorized by these furry little critters um, there was a lot I had to do to make sure that I prevented them from getting in again uh, unfortunately these rigs are built with lots of openings for them to get into so I had to seal this off and trial and error and a couple more incidents and fingers crossed <laughs> I think I've finally blocked their entry into my little home here. So that was no fun. And there definitely were th some things to deal with that weren't a lot of fun. But overall, it was just a great learning, growing, and confidence building experience. I mean, if there's any way to you know, get to know yourself. It's just to do something like this and to be here out on your own and with only yourself to count on and I grew so much that first year. Going into 2020, I felt so much more comfortable in this lifestyle. I was ready to tackle it with everything that I had, and I was feeling really good just knowing I had a whole year behind me and I knew what to do, how to go about finding camping. I knew that I could reel in my budget and get that under wraps and just be much more relaxed uh, the second year around. Then BAM! <laughs> we were hit with a pandemic. I could, would have never seen that coming. I could have never imagined that coming. And that threw a wrench into my works pretty early on. I hung around California at the beginning of 2020 because I had a trip planned, uh, the Trans Catalina Trail in February. I did a trip in Joshua Tree in January. So I planned actually to leave California and head to Utah again, which seems to be my pattern in the early winter, uh, or excuse me, late winter, early spring. Um, but yeah, all of a sudden we were hit with the pandemic. Everything went on lockdown. I didn't know what to do. I was in, just like everybody else, in kind of a panic mode. In the, in the very beginning stages, nobody knew what, there was so many questions. I mean, nobody really knew what was gonna happen. I didn't know if state borders were gonna close. Um, I thought that I should just stay put. So I wound up mooch docking on a friend's driveway for two months from, you know, March, all the March, all of April. And I didn't finally hit the road again until May. And when I finally did hit the road, where did I go? Back to Escalante, Utah. <laughs> it's tradition at this point. I really felt like the best thing that I could possibly do was just to get away from people and get back into the backcountry, get back into nature, and kind of just isolate, self-isolate that way. I have my camper, which I'm self-contained, in the backcountry, I'm away from people, and it really felt like the best thing that I could do. I wound up doing a fantastic trip in Death Hollow that year, and I did a couple of trips in the Escalante area, and that's what really kind of officially kicked off my 2020. I for sure think that a lot of people had that same idea because I saw more people out in the outdoors than I probably ever have. 
Despite all the challenges that the year brought, I did manage to have an amazing year. I traveled the West once again. I wasn't able to get to Canada or Alaska like I had hoped, but I went to Utah, Wyoming, Montana, Washington, Oregon, and of course uh, did some travel in California as well. I did, however, find myself dodging wildfire situations a lot of the year and a lot of the summer. It is still quite smoky here. However, I know that it is improved upon what I've seen over the last few days in photos. Smoke inundated many of the areas that I was in, like Wyoming, and it was actually coming from fires in California and Colorado. I was constantly trying to outrun the smoke when it seemed to always keep catching up with me. Now that's just part of what living in the outdoors is like. You just have to roll with the punches. You have to be flexible. And I managed to still get outdoors quite a bit. I had to skip some of the areas that I would have liked to have gone to or spent more time in, but that's mother nature for you. You can't mess with mother nature. <laughs> There were obviously people out there that had it much worse than I did, that lost everything. The, the wildfires were very, very devastating in 2020. I'm hoping and praying that we don't have that situation here in 2021. I made a pretty nice video highlighting my adventures of 2020 that I will link below. And if you'd like to check that out, please check it out. I actually really like how that video turned out and you can kind of look back at that entire year. That's one of the fun things about making these videos and filming my adventures is that I can look back at all these crazy and wonderful things that I've done and I have this awesome record and that's re really originally why I started my channel is just to be able to document my adventures and look back on them. It's, it's obviously evolved and now uh, it actually pays for my lifestyle and I thank all of you for watching the channel and uh, for subscribing and liking and everything that you do to help grow my channel because it helps me to stay out here and live this life, which uh, I am so, so grateful for. So at the end of 2020, was I ready to stop? Was I ready to throw in the towel and quit living on the road? Heck no. <laughs> I was ready to bring on 2021, bring on a new year and roll into my third year of doing this life. It's uh, not officially, I hadn't officially started year three, although I started season three, I guess you could say in 2021. Uh, but from here on out, we're rolling into year three. I would say at the end of 2020, I felt like I had really grown into this lifestyle. I felt comfortable, I felt confident, and it felt like it was now a part of me. This lifestyle is ingrained in me. It felt, feels like it's what I was supposed to do. I have absolutely no regrets, and I can't wait to see you know, how much longer I'm out here, how much longer I'm gonna be doing this. Um, I don't even wanna count. I just take it one day at a time, and before you know it, days turn into years. It's, it's absolutely amazing. At this time, I'd like to answer three of my most frequently asked questions. Um, I answered these, I think, in my first year. However, they continue to come up over and over and over again, and my channel's grown uh, exponentially since then. So I know I have a lot of new viewers, so I'd like to you know, just cover them once again. It's raining outside right now, so you might hear a little bit of rain on the ceiling of the camper. I love that sound, by the way. The number three most frequently asked question is, am I scared out here all by myself? <laughs> I'm actually not scared. I really learned to trust my gut. If for any reason I feel uncomfortable in any situation or at any place, I just simply move. I make sure that I don't drive at night. I drive during the day. I usually have a few camps picked out in case one doesn't work out or I get creeped out at one I can move to another one and to be quite frank with you I was more scared living in a city filled with people than I have ever been out here with hardly anybody around um, when you're in a sticks and bricks home I think that there's a higher likelihood that you've got someone watching you tracking your moves that sort of thing I'm constantly moving I just feel like no matter where you are Anything can happen anywhere. So it's it's less likely that something's gonna happen to me out here, even with wild animals or that sort of thing. I'm more likely to be you know, in a car accident or hit by a car in a city 
when it's your time, it's your time. That's kind of the way that I feel. So I can't live in fear and I just have to be smart, be aware of my surroundings, trust my gut and be as safe as I could possibly be. But I'm not scared. I don't live in fear and I feel very comfortable out here to be quite honest. The number two question, and this one comes up so much, it's it's crazy. People ask, why no dog? Why don't you have a dog? A dog is a great companion, great company. I agree with those things. And first and foremost, I absolutely love dogs. I'm a dog lover. I'm a dog person. <laughs> you can ask any of my friends and family when I'm around their dogs. I cherish that time. However, having a dog is like having a child. It is a huge responsibility. It would change my lifestyle quite a bit. For one thing, a lot of the trails that I hike do not allow dogs. So what would I do with my, my pet, my fur baby during those times? I would have to find a place to kennel them or just not go, avoid those hikes. Another thing is they can become sick. And I've seen that happen a lot with people that live on the road where now you have to have huge expenses in vet bills and you have to stay in certain areas because they have to be you know taken care of properly and it would just take away a lot of the freedom that i experience right now i know that they're great company but maybe one time or at a point in my life when I'm not wanting to do so many adventures or do so much hiking or multiple day trips, maybe when I'm just wanting to move around and camp in one spot to the next and mellow out my lifestyle, then I'll pick up a dog. But at this point, it would just become quite a responsibility that I'm not ready to take on at this time. And the number one question is, and this ties into people asking me about a dog, I think, is am I lonely? Folks, I am actually not lonely out here. Um, first of all, I don't have a problem being alone. Uh, I enjoy my own company, so that's, that's perfectly fine with me. However, I am with people more than you might imagine. I do share a portion of my life on this channel, but there's a lot that you don't see. And I do spend a lot of time with family and friends that does not wind up on film or on my channel. So it might look as if I'm alone a lot of the time, but I do spend again, more time than you might imagine. I just spent an entire week with a, an old friend and I didn't film it. We went on a backpacking trip and I just enjoyed my time catching up with my friend. So that didn't make it to the channel. My sister lives here in Utah. I've spent quite a bit of time with her while I've been here in Utah. We've gone on an adventure together. So don't worry folks, I'm not lonely. I do work a lot as well, so on my downtime, I'm really quite busy. I don't have a lot of time to think about being alone, and I cherish my alone time. I really do. It gives me time to just be with my thoughts and uh, to contemplate a lot and to grow, so I have no issues being alone, and if there ever comes a time that I want to have a partner, then I would pursue that. It's it's just a choice right now and I have a I have a happy and full life and not lonely. <laughs> So anyways, I hope that uh, you enjoyed kind of this look back on my first two years and uh, just answering these frequently asked questions. I want to let you guys know how much I appreciate each and every one of you. Without you guys, I could not be out here doing this. It means the world to me. Your support means the world to me. Your comments, your likes, your shares, subscribing to the channel. This channel's grown so much over these just over two years and it's just blown my mind the positive reinforcement and the positivity and comments of kind people thank you all so much stay with me we are going to have an amazing 2021 we are already five months into it unbelievable we still have a long ways to go and i've got a lot of adventures planned Thank you again. I appreciate you all and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.